Welcome to the Riggin Farm YouTube channel. In this video, we'll show you our potato and flour growth, some pork processing, our new line of dog food and treats, and our crazy ducks and chickens. Three more rows of potatoes went into the ground last week. We planted the last few of our Adirondack blue potatoes, as well as some pinto fingerlings and Yukon golds in this first row. Mega chip potatoes went into the second row. Superior white and russet potatoes went into the final row. The Adirondack Blue and Pontiac Reds have about 30 days head start over the other varieties. These eight 50 foot rows should give us roughly five to seven thousand potatoes after a hundred days. Good thing we love potatoes. Our ranunculus plants have been doing well and started to bud. Five days later, we had some blooms. We got a cute little bouquet out of the few plants. This weed fabric with holes spaced six inches apart started growing a lot of weeds, so we had to pull them out. This first section wasn't too bad, but there is another 40 feet or so to go. This wasn't particularly fun, but it needed to be done. The following day, we planted about 800 seeds in this one row of fabric. Here's a bone-in pork loin from the pig we harvested on our farm. YouTube doesn't want us showing that process, so we're going to try to find a way to show that footage on another platform. We wanted to break this down into boneless pork chops, and the first thing we had to do was remove the rib bones from the loin. Those are some nice looking chops! Now we have the spare rib cut from the belly, as well as the baby back ribs we just removed from the loin. The backbone is still attached, but it won't interfere when we cook it. Normally you'd use a bandsaw to cut the backbone away from the ribs, but we don't have one, and our handsaw doesn't cut very straight, so we just had to make do. No big deal. We decided to try the sirloin chops first. These come from the section between the loin and the ham. Check out the marbling in this heritage breed pasture-raised pig. That's good stuff. We seasoned them with just salt and pepper to let the natural flavor shine through. Now the hard part. Letting them rest before we dig in. Part of the chop is white meat, like you'll find in the loin, but this other part is red meat. It had a very similar flavor profile to grass-fed beef. Had I been blindfolded and given this meal, I would have guessed it was a grass-fed New York strip steak. This is nowhere close to what you'll find at any grocery store. Good thing for you, we sell this pork to the public. We took this nicely trimmed side of pork belly and cut it into three pieces before applying three different flavored cures to them to make bacon. We have coffee rubbed in front, brown sugar in the middle, and black peppercorn in the back. Just seven days in the fridge before we smoke it and slice it into the most incredible bacon ever. A few days later, we smoked a boneless pork shoulder roast. It got a simple treatment of yellow mustard, salt, and pepper. After a few hours on super smoke mode, we moved it to the top rack and placed a pan of beans under it. Then we turned the heat up and let the fat and juices drip into our side dish. It pulled well and made delicious sandwiches topped with our homemade barbecue sauce. We still have a freezer full of various cuts of pork. Over 100 pounds of chops, roasts, and ribs. That doesn't include our 10 pounds of bacon, 11 pounds of ham, 15 pounds of lard, and 54 pounds of trimmings that will be ground and made into sausage. We ground and packed about 7 pounds of plain pork and made 10 pounds of Italian sausage and 5 pounds of chorizo. This coming week we'll use the rest of our trimmings for breakfast sausage, bratwurst, pepperoni, and snacking sticks. That's kind of like a Slim Jim. We also made dog food with the pork heart and liver, chicken hearts and livers, brown rice, peas, and carrots. These 20 ounce bags will be kept in the freezer until they're sold. We had some leftovers that wouldn't fill an entire bag, so we gave them to our dog. Let's see what she thinks of it. Apparently it's better than the dry food she normally eats. The pig lungs were cut into pieces and dehydrated to make treats. When we processed our chickens, we dehydrated the feet as well. Dogs go crazy over these. 
Both the chicken feet and pork lung bites are available to purchase on our website. Our 26 Cornish Cross chicks are out of the brooders now. They'll continue to grow for the next four to five weeks. Having the extra room and healthy forage will enhance their overall health and flavor. These birds will be used during our chicken processing workshops. As of this recording, there are only two slots available for the first one and six for the second date. So if you're in the North Georgia area, head to our website and sign up before it's too late. The brooders aren't going to stay empty for long because we'll be getting baby turkeys towards the end of June. So make sure you subscribe if you don't already to follow along as they grow until Thanksgiving season. The Cornish Cross and two Red Ranger hens stay safe at night from predators while sleeping in our old mobile coop that we used at our old house. The ducks and some of the chickens escape every single morning to notify us that they're hungry. We're currently working on finishing up the fence to prevent this from happening. They even follow us into the shipping container while we get their feed ready. Crazy birds! We haven't shown the inside of their coop in a while, so here's a peek. The chickens roost on the five bars we made from small trees on the property, and the ducks sleep on the pine shaving covered floor. The duck pond we made from a kiddie pool was cleaned and filled with fresh water, so of course the birds had to go check it out. The ducks are so much fun to watch. There are plans to give the ducks a separate area from the chickens with a ground level coop for them. Hopefully we'll end the nightly duck chase at that point in time. We shall see. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.